Explore it, Sands of Shurax. This is your review for two. Good day, my name is Joe Gerba. Today I'll be going over uh, Hexplore, Sands of Shurax, and how it plays with two players. Um, it was a one to six player game. This is the third installment of the Hexplore kind of series. And I'm actually not gonna uh, go into detail about uh, how to really play Hexplore. I'll just give you some of the uh, our thoughts about the game uh, after a couple of plays and what I think about it compared to the other ones. As you guys know, I really do like Hexplore it. I think it's a really neat game. Uh, you get more uh, characters to choose from. Um, we played, you know, the Assassin, the Scion, uh, just a whole bunch of uh, new characters, new boards, new abilities. Um, the, the board is, is, is interesting, it's great. It's different from the first two where you're, you're building out this middle, essentially, you know, this, this big worm is, is popping up and down uh, in this game and trying to ravage, um, just ravage the lands and eventually ravage the, the large cities. What's neat about this game is, is the cities are actually on the outside and you have to travel through these caravans uh, to get from place to place or uh, in the wastes. Now this ravager will start popping up in the wastes. Um, the outer places are going to give you missions to go to, which is a little bit different than um, different than the normal Hexplore. Uh, there's still the circumstances, but you have to travel with these caravan. You get a caravan master. You go through caravan events um, that can be good or bad along the way. Uh, you can make friends. You can protect the caravan events. There's a lot to do in these travels uh, while you're exploring. Um, What's a little bit different about this game is you can get mutations. Uh, these mutations uh, kind of occur, kind of affect your character, give you a little bit more um, variability as you play. Uh, it's the same mechanics, you know, as far as uh, you're gonna you're gonna move, then you're gonna search for food, gold. You have to eat and feed your person. Once again, this is just a wonderful role-playing game that you can delve as deep into as you want, and it's just a lot of fun. There's so much to this game. Out of the three so far, this is probably the most expansive and most immersive game. Um, I will caveat that and say, however, this is the hardest one to get into. The rule book, I read it, you know, 84 pages. And this thing is thick. This is not something that you can just grab off the shelf and get back to the table. I could probably get Valley of the Dead King. I could grab it off the shelf and get it back to the table. That's volume one. Uh, this is volume three. Uh, Forest of Adramon, uh, really neat, but that would take some getting used to. This one, I'd have to do a full read of the books. But the components in this game are just awesome. I love writing it down. There's so many reference sheets, good, bad, or otherwise, that give you a lot of stuff. Uh, there's new things to do in the town. You can gamble. You can go to the arena. Um, there's just the the D&D likeness of this game is just growing with every volume, and I just love that. You can go really deep into the lore. You can go really deep into the world that's created with Hexplore, and I just love that. It takes up all of my three by six table. It is cluttered, and by the end of the game, you have stuff everywhere. It's tough to keep organized, but well, once again, they give you the um, uh, the dry erase markers, and you just write down all your stats um, on your character. You keep them. You can upgrade your gear slots. You can upgrade, you know, everything like that. It has the same problems that the other Hexplorates have though, where the combat is just not fun and it's just boring. If you're looking for a high combat game, this is not the game. This is about you working with your partners, discovering stuff together, um, upgrading your character, exploring the lands, trying to get more powerful, deciding what you can and can't do. There's a lot of decisions that can be made outside of combat, and that's what makes this game awesome. 
uh, the circumstances are all new. Caravan masters, like I said, just traveling the world. Um, your quest to power up. Uh, the monsters are actually really neat. Um, you know, the they can come out with their own mutations. You can make this game as hard or as easy as you want. The sandbox nature of this game is just leaps and bounds, even above the other two. Like I said, you could make this into a D and D role playing campaign. But, man, the combat is just not, just not that good. My, my buddy and I discussed it. We played two games. We just have such a good time. It took us six hours, um, which is quite a bit. So we, we dedicated a good portion or all of our afternoon. We started at 1 o'clock, ended at 7 uh, both times. But there's just... The game is just so much fun, and then you get to the combat, and it just it just stalls out. And that's really tough for me to say, because everything else about this game is amazing, is awesome, fleshed out. It just feels like role-playing in a box. Um, me and my buddy love the game, love the concepts outside of combat. Everything else amazing. I highly recommend it. I do not recommend it for uh, your first Hexplored game. I would either pick up Valley of the Dead King, uh, that can get stale fairly quick, or Forest of Adramon, which is actually a really neat concept. Um, you can watch my video on that, but you're building these um, uh, relics to kind of help defeat the final boss. In this one, you're just trying to uh, and then that's another thing about this game. There's just so much to it. Each of the four cities that uh, are, are far distant apart have their own wind conditions. If you want to beat the guy, great. If you want to drain, it, drain it of its energy and outlast it, you know, and use it for science, great. If you want to just pay an army and just pull all your resources the whole game, great. Uh, hire an army and beat the thing. If you want to be the real bad guy, um, you can uh, get this thing to eat all other three cities uh, in the map and just have that one left and you you also win the game that way. There's four ways to win. There's tons of, of cards, replayability. Once again, they give you a ton of races to match with um, the, the roles and that matches with the traits if you uh, get the expansion, which <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stuff. It's really neat. There, there's the you know black pyramid if you want to go down. There's, there's getting mercenaries. There's just so much in this game. This game is difficult to learn. Like I said, you can't just pick it off. I would not recommend this for a game right after you play. You know, Ticket to Ride, or Settlers of Catan, or Waterdeep. Um, this game is for an experienced board gamer that wants an intimate D and D like campaign with the combat not as good, but just a great storytelling experience. Um, I would get the add-on if you're, if you're on the fence about this game. If you've played the other two and wondering to get this game, this game's awesome. I'm gonna get every Hexplored from here on out. It's just, it's just amazing. Uh, the storytelling is just, just so much fun. We had such a good time. Our six hours went like this. Near the end, we were feeling pretty powerful. We fought the, uh, uh, the last, the Ravager, the last boss, and surprisingly not, uh, we barely did beat it. Uh, we had probably about two or three turns of, of uh, fighting left, so we thought we were super powerful, but we could have been more powerful going into the boss. But you get this, you're on this roll, you level up your character, you're feeling really great. Uh, this is the best final boss, I think, out of the three. I think it's really neat. Um, there's so much to say about this game, um, but the, the core of Hexplored is still here. Drastically different than the other two in the layouts. You know, you're not just buying just different tiles, you're buying a whole different Hexplored type game. He the exploring is awesome, just moving around, deciding what to buy in the cities. Like I said, the cities are just chock full of character this time, and I wish we could spend more time in those, but we had to complete our missions. We had to, you know, get out there, get the circumstances, get the gold, keep moving, keep moving while the Ravager was ravaging the wastes. And, you know, I, I could talk about this for 
for hours. Um, but you know, in conclusion, this is a great game. Um, I would not start here in the Hexplorit series, but as a experienced person, this game is awesome. Uh, plays really well. Will take you about six hours for two. Um, you could play two characters a person, but that can get a little bit overwhelming. I always have uh, big aspirations to do that, but usually by the end, one uh, one character each is enough. And um, man, this game is awesome, but it is the learning curve is steep. It comes with a huge storybook for adventure, much play styles. Um, the rule book, however, super thick, references all over the place, scatterbrain talking about it, scatterbrain playing it, but man, do I really enjoy this game. So uh, that's my review of um, Hexplort uh, Sands of Shurax, the third installment of the Hexplort series, and um, have a good one, and until next time.